What is going on, beautiful people? It's your boy, Blue, and this, my friends, is one of, if not, the most realistic aircraft ever created for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is the Piper PA-24 Comanche 250 by 808 Simulations. Currently, we're tied down in Van Nuys, Southern California, and we're gonna take her for a short flight up to Santa Barbara to see the mechanic over at the maintenance hangar. It's gonna be a beautiful flight, so we're gonna bring a few friends along, but first, let's do the pre-flight walk around. Okay, first we'll remove the control lock and then we'll head outside. The iPad has a nice walk around mode, so we're just gonna check our flaps there. We can now check our ailerons. You can move them up and down with our mouse, which is a nice feature. Look we'll over here, we can also check the wing tip fuel tank, which I don't know has anything in it or not. You actually look in there, it looks pretty dark. It's either empty or very, very low but it has really nice sounds. Everything has a sound to it, which is pretty cool. We go down underneath and we have to also check uh, the wingtip tank if there's any um, water in the fuel. And that looks pretty good to me. You bring it back down and drain it back out. It's like that. Isn't that sweet? That is so cool. <laughs> All right, we'll go around, we'll check the lights. We should have turned the battery on and actually checked the lights, um, but we didn't. Go over here, we'll take the tie down off and next, now we can check the actual um, fuel on the wings here. We click on that. And it's a bit dark, but again, I can't see. We do need to add fuel probably. I'm not sure if we have any fuel uh, loaded up yet, so we'll get that checked on. All right, close that, move on. Go ahead and remove the chocks. Open this up. Once again, we check and make sure there's no water in the fuel. And I don't know if we have fuel because there's nothing coming in, coming out of there. So we're going to have to check on that. Propellers look good as well as the front engine cowling. We can also go over here and check the oil. I love all of the sounds. Oh yeah, oil is good. Oil is good and pretty clean too. Let me go ahead and drop that back down there. Check out those custom sounds. That's pretty sweet. All right, next we have the uh, the other tank on the right side. We can open this up again. Again, we can fit 30 US gallons on either side. And I'm pretty sure this plane has no fuel in it. So we have to, fall, we have to call the fueler to bring some fuel out to us. All right, now we'll get the chucks. And we'll remove the remove before flight from the pitot here. Just click on that to remove it, and we'll also remove the tie down. Also checking the light on the left side. Again, our light's not on. You can also open this up and check the uh, left wing tip tank. Again, make sure there's no bird's nest or nothing like that inside of them. You never know. And again, checking to see if there's... We, it looks like we definitely have something in the wing tip tanks, but um, nothing in the main in the wing. All right, again, checking those ailerons, make sure they're good. So you can actually break them. That's why you're actually able to change them. You'll see later when we look at the maintenance um, that you can actually break pretty much anything on the, brain, on the plane. Check the flaps, those are good. We'll check the static port, make sure nothing's uh, disrupting it, nothing's in it. And then we can also check the elevators. You can move those like that, that's pretty nice as well as the actual rudder too. You can move that around, it's pretty sweet. And we'll also grab the last tie down. And check the last static port on the right side, that looks good. And then here you can actually uh, load up some cargo. So again, I did say we're gonna bring some friends along with us and they do have a few bags. So we're not gonna be too heavy. We'll bring a small suitcase. We'll also bring this orange bag as well as a little bit of a personal bag or purse. And that's all we'll bring. We'll go and shut that and head back inside. All right, cool. So back inside, we can see, let's go ahead and get fueled up first. So uh, let's go have like maybe six, maybe five gallons. Um, we'll, we'll do three. We'll do three gallons of fuel on the left and right tip tanks. And for the main, uh, we don't need a full 
like load here. We're just gonna bring maybe uh, let's say 12. Let's say 12 and 12. That gives about 24 gallons, just underneath about half, I believe, full there. We'll, we'll do we'll do 15. Let's be safe here. We'll do 15 gallons. Have some nice extra fuel there, and also we'll have uh, three passengers with us. So I'm about 150 myself. Uh, we're gonna have our our friend here on our right. She weighs about uh, one. We'll say 130. She's pretty light, and then we also have. Our friend behind us, she is about the same weight as her, so we'll go with about 130. And then our friend in the back seat behind us, he's a little bit heavier, we'll go with 170. As well as it already put the weight for the baggage that we loaded manually, which is pretty sweet. We are still within our CG and everything, so we're good there. But we are going to be a little heavy, that's why I don't want to bring too much fuel with us today. All right, and I got to say, this EFB here is pretty impressive. It's incredible. I'm not going to go through all of the features of what it does, what it can do. Like, you can actually use a tow bar and push and, and pull the aircraft and move it around manually, which is pretty cool with the engines off. Uh, but again, there's plenty of other videos and tutorials online. You can watch that. Uh, today, we're just going to fly the plane. We're going to enjoy the plane because I am in love with it. And if you learn a thing or two, hey... That's that's a great suit, but right now we're just gonna enjoy and appreciate this plane. So we go to a maintenance page. This is my favorite page. We've already done our walk around. We got our fuel payload done. Uh, we're basically ready to get started. Before we get started, let's go ahead and inspect the state of the aircraft. So we checked the ailerons earlier and the flaps and the tires and things like that. And as you fly the aircraft around, as you it wears and tears, you will start to see some of these components fail or some of these components. Uh, wear out so like your flaps could actually break if you you know over you know over g them or you know let them down too fast same thing with your gear your propeller can actually bend and break uh all kind of stuff can happen so when you hit inspect here you can actually go ahead and check if it's green that means it's obviously good let's go look at our engine now so go to our engine page you can see here i've actually already inspected it we'll inspect it again and you can see yeah look at that so now we have a few things in orange which is kind of more of a warning. It doesn't mean that they don't work, but it does mean that we're not gonna be operating to the best of its ability. And this is the reason why we're taking this plane over to Santa Barbara to the maintenance hangar to get it overhauled and get it fixed. So one thing I do love about this is that it shows you what everything means. Like for example, me, I'm not an aircraft mechanic. Sometimes I wish I was. I think it might be a pretty cool job. But if you click on them, click on starter here, you can see that it now t tells you exactly what that is. This starter appears to have a low time and it's nice shape. The gear pops out and spins nicely. It has a lot of life left in it. So that's a good, that's good. We go to our alternator though. Look at our alternator. Alternator, uh, while the alternator is still producing full voltage, it will need replacing soon. The brushes are worn down. Keep an eye on your ammeter because if your alternator fails in flight and you don't notice it, the first time you notice anything will be when your battery is dead and in a night flight, this is dangerous. So if you plan to fly at night, overhaul is recommended. Wow. So that's pretty interesting. It tells you not only the state of it, but also how to detect it in your gauges. So, we'll, you know, we have to keep that in mind for our flight. Thankfully, we're not flying at night. Again, we can go to our oil pump. Another thing that needs to be fixed. Oil pump has some time on it so we can assure it could be wearing down. Oil pressure is still satisfactory, so it's still airworthy, but keep a close eye on your oil pressure. So again, another thing to keep in mind. Mechanical fuel pump. This engine driven fuel pump has a lot of time on it and it shows age. While there are no visible leaks and fuel pressure, it's still good and overhaul is recommended. Technically, it's still airworthy. Now, magneto left. This magneto is wearing down and the points are starting to pit. This is likely not performing at its peak. While technically it's still airworthy, airworthy an overhaul, again, is recommended. Again, this is why we're bringing it over to the maintenance hangar in Santa Barbara. Now, look at this. Five here. Cylinder number five. Compression is low on this cylinder and overhaul is recommended. However, it's technically still airworthy. Worn rings or valves are the likely cause. You may notice some misfires at idle or low RPM, but the cylinder is still able to produce full power. The cylinder may also burn more oil. Keep an eye on the engine monitor CHT and EGT temps. If both start to show low temps, known as a cold cylinder, this would indicate a failing cylinder. So 
another thing I haven't talked about yet is the fact that right here it shows replace. We could replace that single part and that will for you know for now be good it'd be like brand new so you shouldn't have those issues uh, or we can hit overhaul engine that'll fix the entire engine to a brand spanking new engine and it'll start wearing from there so i love that so again this is why we're bringing it to the maintenance hangar you go to our engine analyzer we'll see more about this when we get the aircraft started but right now if i move my throttle on my um yeah on my actual hardware you can see the throttle actually moving you can um and that's pretty much it uh, you'll see the fuel pumps and stuff like that later on. And then our electrical system, you can see our battery right here. If our battery is low, uh, we can actually go ahead and hit the battery right now. There we go. You see our battery is on. It's producing 12.4 volts and it's going straight to the cockpit, powering all the cockpit lights and stuff like that. It's bypassing the alternator because it's not on, right? And if I go ahead and turn it off, you see that goes away. I can... if. Your battery is low, which has happened to me before. You can hit click right here and recharge it. It'll also tell you on the airframe screen if your battery is low. So there's a lot of great things about this plane, but my one of my favorite is this right here, having to deal with the maintenance and taking care of your aircraft. And it does really matter how you fly the aircraft, the environment you're flying it in. Anyway, you know what? Let's just, let's just go with it, man. Let's just go flying. Oh, and one other thing I really like as well is the flight info page where it has the environment information. It shows you the temperature, 82 degrees Fahrenheit, precipitation, winds, altimeter, all that stuff is right here. Just pretty darn sweet. All right, so before engines start, pre-flight is done. Passengers have been briefed, seatbelts secured, controls locked, removed, parking brakes set, gear switch is down. Uh, yep, uh, let's get the master switch on. Well, no, yep, gear switch is down. Uh, flaps are up, radios are off, autopilot master is off, avionics master is off, uh, electrical switches are all off, circuit breakers are all in, circuit breakers are down here, and rotating beacon on, we'll go to engine start, fuel mixture, desired tank, we have that set to the left tank already, we have our mixture full rich, our prop full for it, we have our throttle correct, and carb heat is off, master switch is on, fuel pump on. And you see we do have plenty of fuel pressure there. We'll go ahead and shut that off. We're not going to go ahead and skip the primer this time. And we're going to try to get it fired up. So, clear! Oh, man. This thing started right up. <laughs> oh, shoot. That's the first time that's happened. All right, we're going to close that window. And uh, I'm not sure if you guys noticed it, but that door shut on its own. Uh, due to the prop wash. So, we'll go ahead and shut it. We'll go ahead and lock it. There we go, now it's a little bit quieter in here. And we'll also get the radio. There we go, get our headphones put on. We get a bit of a noise cancellation. If you want, you could also click on here and get even more. So I like to leave it on, at least while we're uh, doing our run-ups and stuff, so I can make sure I hear if there's any issues happening. So we'll leave that, leave that as is. We'll bring our throttle back down about 1,000 RPM or so. That's good, and we'll lean it out just a little. So I'm bringing my mixture back. All right, that's far enough. That'll save us some fuel while we're sitting here on the ground. All right, so fuel pump is off. Uh, let's see, starter is engaged. Oil pressure, we'll check that. So again, we gotta watch out for a few things. So oil pressure is in the green. Oil temp is a little low, but I think it's okay. Needs to warm up a little bit. Plane's been sitting overnight. And engine start checklist is complete. We'll go over to our taxi checklist. So primer's been, uh, we'll go ahead and lock that. Primer's locked in. Avionics master, turn that on. And we should see all of our screens come to life here. We've got our Jarman GTN 750XI here on the left. I love this thing. And we'll, uh, we'll program that here in just a second. So am ammeter. So again, we got to watch out for our ammeter. Tox, um, system test okay. Because that is one of the issues we have currently. Looks good for now. Uh, radios are on. We'll get them set as well. So we are in. Actually, we'll come back to that. All similar that we know is two nine 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 er. So we'll go ahead and scroll that. That sets heading indicator. So the heading indicator. So there is a gyro. Uh, like it'll move. So you have to actually make sure this is set and matching this. So we're right north, right next to thirty three, and you can see this definitely does not match. So my very very first flight. Let's go ahead and click this. Push it in. And then all we gotta do is just turn it and make it match what we have on our compass. 
So my very first flight, I ended up flying the complete wrong direction because I didn't know that this was simulated like this. But um, yeah, when you first get in the aircraft, in most cases, this will not be uh, pointed in the right direction and you have to get it um, calibrated somehow. You can either use a compass, you can use, I can use a GTN over here and it'll tell me about a map. There it is, track. It'll tell us our current actual track to like the T right there, just three, four, five. So we can just move this and scroll it until we get to around three, four, five. If you don't have a GTN or something of that nature, then again, you can just use a compass. So three, three, zero is there. So three, four, five is gonna be around around there somewhere. Landing gear light is green, that's checked. Nav lights as required, that's right here, a bit of a, a turn dial. So we'll roll that to the right for our nav lights. And while we're down here, we'll go ahead and turn on COM2, which does work. And we'll get the ATIS, which is 12755. Vanda Airport, ATIS information Foxtrot, 1651 Zulu, wind 120 at 5. Visibility one zero. Sky condition clear. All right, now for our flight plan, just in case we get lost, we should be able to get there without using the GPS. We'll just use the VORs, but in case we get lost, we'll go ahead and FIM, which is the Fillmore. Oh, you hear that? You hear that piston misfiring? SoCal approach, Archer 450, remember at 1000, climbing 2000. November 4507 November, SoCal Depart, radar contact, climbing. Yeah, we'll just kind of leave in a little bit more. We'll come back the mixture a little bit. We'll do 1200 RPM instead. That sounds a little healthier. Anyways, alright, so FIM, and then our second waypoint is just going to be RZS, which is going to be the uh, San Marcos. VOR, so we'll put that in again just in case we get lost. We can test the GPS as well. And then our final stop of Santa Barbara, so KSBA, that's it. Alright, and one last thing before we head out, um, just to save us some time, is we'll do our run up right here in the parking. So we're going to drag this over there, make it easier to access. And we got our aircraft position here. Winds are calm anyway, so it doesn't really matter. We'll hold the brakes. And then we'll go ahead and move. We'll check our fuel quantity. Fuel quantity is good on both sides, about 15 gallons on either side. Uh, we'll go ahead and make sure that our mixture is set as we like, which I think is fine for now. Props full forward. Throttle up to 2,000 RPM. And that sounds good. Sounds pretty healthy. We can go ahead and check our. Oil pressure, oil temp, fuel pressure, ammeter, vacuum, CHT. Everything looks okay at the moment. Oil pressures look good. Our temperatures are fine. So things look pretty solid right now. Looks airworthy to me. We'll go ahead and check our magnetos now. So we'll go ahead and start with the right, sorry, the, um, the left one. All right, bit of a drop there. Back to both. And now we go to right. Yeah, so the right one is is pretty healthy. That's the left one right there. The left one has a pretty decent drop, but I think it's still it's still fine. So back to both. All right, now we're gonna cycle our prop. So we'll pull our prop down. Three times. That's one. Three. Bring back up to 1500. See if it runs smooth there. See our cylinder head is pretty hot on six. It should calm down once we uh, I back up and we'll bring our throttle back down to 1000. Right, yeah, so as it said, we're running a little, a little rough at the low RPMs. 
So we'll leave it a little higher than that. All right, we're good, guys. We're ready to taxi now. Uh, Van Nuys Ground, November 116 Bravo, over to Hangars, short of Alpha 2, uh, request taxi with information Fox Drop. 116 Bravo, Van Nuys Ground, runway 16 right, taxi via Alpha Charlie. 16 right via Alpha Charlie, November 116 Bravo. All right, let's go. Brakes release. We're under 47, Mike, contact still called departure. Departure 947, Mike, you cleared for takeoff. I have to say, uh, this aircraft feels Take pretty off. good. Uh, um, on the ground, right taxi. Pattern, pattern. Feels right really right good. Downwind, departure approved. Runway 1, 2, good for takeoff. All right, ready to go. Van Nuys Tower, number 116, Bravo, holding short, 16 right, ready to go. Number 116, Bravo, Van Nuys Tower, make right cross and departure. Stay below 2,500 till advised. Runway 1, 2, strike, good for takeoff. Right crosswind departure, stay below 2,500, 16 right, clear for takeoff, number 116, Bravo. Number 47, Mike, when you're able to... All right, guys, let's get it. Direct the UGE 947, Mike. Uh-oh. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'll approach the 733 Alpha. All right, so fuel pump is on, land lights are on. We'll check left. Number 733 Alpha Mike, so call departure at our contact. Turn. Wyman, I'll turn. Three, zero, zero, three. <laughs> Camp off two district. Oh, navigation. Yeah, there's something wrong with our brakes. Something is wrong with our brakes. Altitude restriction, resume out 733 Alpha Mike. All right, right crosswind departure, say below 2,500. Let's go. New approach is Cessna 1607 oh, from Nose already popping up on us. Airspeed is alive. 1607, box, trot. Dallas departure, go ahead. And here we go, we're up. Cessna 1607, Fox Trot. Oz of Rake, you're up. Two miles on radio zero. Uh, four zero of uh, Alright, clear the trees, make a right turn, crosswind. Uh, 5,500, climbing 6,500, requesting GPS-1 arrive. Alright, in the climb, we'll say about 2424, so 2400 manifold, 2400 prop. So bring the props back just a little bit. For 07 Fox, trot, remain outside the Bravo squad, 0267. Uh, second, responded. Zero. All right, there we go. Rolling out there, looking at our props, bringing our manifold back just a little bit, 24. Negative squawk zero. And that's good right there. All right, guys, we're climbing out. We got to stay below 2,500 right now. We're passing 1,300. Let's see a few strobe lights, so there's some traffic in our area. Watch out for that. We're also expecting to get a... Uh, Switch over to departure for real soon. Number one six Bravo contact SoCal departure. Contact SoCal departure number one one six Bravo. One departure number one six Bravo. Uh, two thousand two hundred. Number one one six Bravo SoCal departure radar contact Van Nuys Alpha two nine or nine or eight cancel out two restriction resume on navigation. Resume on navigation number one one six Bravo. All right, we're on our own for now. So we're going to make a right turn here on course, and we'll continue climbing. Altitude restriction has been lifted. Uh, man, this plane feels so good to fly. Um, I love flying it by hand. It feels so smooth. It really feels... It actually feels like... I don't know, like I'm in the air, like I'm flying in the sky. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't feel twitchy. It doesn't... A lot of those uh, things that we... Oh, boy. Oh, my God. What's going on there? What is going on there? Bring that back. Bring that back. Overpowered. We're definitely having some problems with our engine. I don't know if we can even make it all the way to Santa Barbara. Did you see that? That's the thing about this, man. This plane is literally living, breathing aircraft. And we I'll may be having a failure here, here, guys. We may be having a failure here. Um, I've got the manifold all the way back to about 17, and it's running down, really rough. It will try to run the car uh, beat here. Or left, uh, or remaining the pattern. Number six two four eight nine along Beach Tower. And uh, I'm gonna try not to look at the tablet immediately. Left, good for takeoff. Report midfield down each path. 
Alright, there's more power in. Oh, it's running really rough. It is running really rough. We're gonna have to return. Alright, we're heading back. We're heading back to Van Nuys. Thanks for Hotel Expect Visual for Israel, my teaser, right? Expect Visual 28 for 947. Yeah, we're gonna head back to Van Nuys. I'm not sure how long we can make it. Everyone, Fort Niner, Charlie, Delta, Camarillo Ground. Oh, this is not good. You have CHTR 3, 4, cylinder head 3, 4, and 6 are all overheating. Gina then has filed. Maintain 3,000. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. Alright, the good thing is it does have emergencies in here. Uh, power loss, power off, uh, power off landing, engine fire, electrical fire, carburetor icing, we don't know, engine... Uh -oh. We just lost it. We just lost the engine. Pilot edge disconnected. <laughs> yes. Where are we putting this thing down? Oh my god, there's nothing but just neighborhoods out here. There's really nowhere within gliding distance to put it. Airport's too far away. Yeah, man, we should've just stayed back at Van Nuys. Oh my god. I mean, there's that area over there. That's the best option we have, that little dirt patch right there. That is our best option, so that's what we're gonna have to do. Let's see if we can recrank it. might help us a little bit. It doesn't really want to start. Ugh, it's running so rough right now. Alright, we're gonna try to put it down right here. Alright, we're gonna do an engine off landing here. Here we go, guys. Gear down. Oh, this is gonna be sketch. Alright, she's windmilling though. That'll help us a little bit. Alright, we got a lot of speed. Terrain right. ahead. Pull up. Terrain ahead. Terrain ahead. Oh my god, this is not good. Let's see if we can slip it in. 500. Oh, this is be so sketchy. Ah! Hold on. Oh, not good. Ah! Oh, man. Oh! 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 Oh, y'all all right? Oh my God, we gotta get out of here. Let's get out of here. Okay, so our plane has made it back to Van Nuys, um, and uh, this flight was was a good example of what could go wrong uh, and you can see as well the damage is modeled as well as our propeller is completely a loss um, so it's it's pr pretty bad uh, I can't lie I was kind of hoping you know for some wear and tear throughout our flight but I, I wasn't expecting uh, it to go to, to this extent but I'm glad it did because it shows a good example of, of what could happen what could go wrong and why it's important to fly the plane and keep an eye on the temperatures and the wear and tear on certain components because you can end up like this. So let's hop inside real quick where it's a little bit qu uh, quieter and uh, take a look at the actual maintenance page. And Now look at this, look at this detail. Down here we have a remove before flight. This is an actual maintenance tag. Um, that tag, I, I can't do anything in the aircraft because that's there and I think that pops up whenever you have the jacks on. All right, so let's go look at our airframe first and see how things are. So we'll click on inspect and we can now see that the battery is low voltage, the propeller is completely a total loss and we did have uh, a brake problem. I knew it, I knew something was going on. I was like, this, this is weird. Like usually this aircraft is a, is a beautiful uh, joy to, to taxi and it just didn't feel that great this time so we definitely had some brake problems i'm surprised we didn't break an aileron or a flap or the other tire so i'm not sure how hard you got to hit those things or, or what exactly will cause that i'm not even sure what caused our brakes to fail on our right side but let's go to look at our engine now we'll inspect that oh we oh my god that is bad all right so crankshaft is messed up 
Uh, that's no surprise. Alternator is messed up. I think Alternator was already orange before. Uh, once we completely lost these, the cylinder one and two and five are completely done. This cylinder may not be firing at all. It isn't holding pressure and the oil is getting into the combustion chamber. Fuel is likely also to get into the oil, which will make it turn black sooner. These contaminants then get into all moving parts. It needs a complete overhaul, not airworthy. So we can replace that right there. It's the same thing for cylinder one and two and five. Three, four, and six are all not doing too great, but obviously, you know, uh, completely lost our magneto. The issue is I don't know exactly what failed that caused us to come to a crash landing. Some of this stuff may have been caused after the impact with the ground. Our oil pump was failed as well. So, I mean, if you have, if you were to have this screen up while flying, you could, you know, kind of assess and figure out what's has, what's been broken uh, during flight. Um, I like to try to look at my gauges and try to figure it out that way. Cause I'm, honestly, this way is unrealistic and you would never have a, a monitor like this while you're flying but i do love that i can see this um and actually see it and learn because over time you'll learn what's going out and what's looking good let's go to engine analyzer um not much to see here you can really only see things here when it's running our electrical system see our battery is low so yes engines is bad it's uh it's bad so we didn't make it to santa barbara uh maybe next time we'll do another video where we actually make a full flight um i was hoping to actually make it I actually was hoping to do some flying today and don't forget the spark plugs also can go bad as well and the oil levels. But yeah, well, guys, this is the Command G250 from 808. I am extremely impressed. Uh, I, I love it. I love that you actually have to take care of your plane. And if you don't, bad things actually happen. Um, and it'll teach you a lot about how to fly your aircraft and how not to hurt it and damage it in real life. But guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video in the Comanche. Um, not the ending I was hoping for and expecting, but I thought it was a great example of what this aircraft is capable of. I will say, don't be afraid. If you are a person who are interested maybe slightly into this aircraft and you think, oh, I don't wanna fly it, it's just gonna crash on me every time. That is not the case. I did turn up the wear and tear rate on this aircraft you can do that you can have it turned to slow you can have it like five times fast or normal and i have it turned up to kind of hopefully you know be able to simulate some of these failures didn't think it would happen this quick but guys until next time remember you have three choices give up give in and give it all you got peace love and god bless you i'll see you guys next time next video i'm out